you doing today? I hope that you are doing amazing and fantastic and wonderful. Yeah, I have a stack of books here that I have hauled. Some of them are library hauls, so I have to return them soon. But then the other ones are just, it's just a haul that that I have made over the past few weeks. Um, I am, It is unfortunate because I did order three mystery boxes from eBay, right? But I ordered them on May 23rd or 24th and I still haven't received it and it's been a month and they were supposed to be mailed three weeks ago and the person, I, like I contacted the seller and they said that they had to get in touch with the post office and then, then they were supposed to be delivered on the 18th and it's the 25th currently. So I don't have, it was supposed to be like 50 books guys. Like it was gonna be glorious. But this is still glorious. I'm still super excited about these books. So without further ado, let's get into this. The very first book I have is actually a classic. It is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandra Dumas. Um, I am going to be buddy reading this with um, Catherine and our friend Nicole and this is one of her favorite books of all time and so I'm super excited to um, to dive into it. I've never read The Count of Monte Cristo. Guys, I am like going out of my comfort zone this summer. I am super excited to, to, um, to read this and have other people to talk to about it. It's going to be amazing. It says, set against the turbulent years of the um, Napoleonic era, Alexandre Dumas's thrilling adventure story is one of the most widely read romantic novels of all time. In it, the dashing young hero Edmond Dantes is betrayed by his enemies and thrown into a secret dungeon in the Chateau d'If. Um, doomed to spend his life in a dank prison cell, the story of his long, intolerable years in captivity, his miraculous escape, and his carefully wrought revenge creates a dynamic tale of mystery and intrigue and paints a vision of France, a dazzling, dueling, exuberant France that has become immortal. So, super, super excited to read this. Speaking of classics... So excited about my buddy read with Ellery Adams for um, Pride and Prejudice and Pride and Premeditation. So we've decided that we're going to do this every other month. And so our live stream is going to be in August. We haven't picked the date yet, but the classic that we're going to read is Little Women. Look at this cover, guys. Ugh. It's just flipping stunning. Just gorgeous. One. I didn't know Little Women was this thick. She's thick with like three C's. Thick. Um, it, this book is like 700 and something pages long. I can't even, like, this is probably one of the longest books I've read in a while. 777 pages. So we're going to be reading this as well as um, it should be delivered tomorrow. So I'm just going to post a picture of it. It's Megan Joe. It's a contemporary um, retelling of Little Women. So I'm going to be reading that. Then I did a spontaneous um, uh, book haul on Book Outlet. I had originally ordered six books, but apparently by the time I checked out, one of the books was already gone or something. But uh, I got Elevation by Stephen King, and this is a super short book. I've never read a Stephen King novel before, so it looks really, really good, and it's sci-fi, which is going to be fun. So Castle Rock is a small town where word gets around quickly. I mean, all small towns have that, right? That's why Scott Carey wants to confide only in his friend, Dr. Bob Ellis, about his strange condition. He's losing weight without getting thinner, and the scales register the same whether he is in his clothes or out of them, no matter how heavy they are. Scott also has new neighbors who have opened a fine dining experience in town. Although it's an experience being shunned by the locals, Deidre McComb and her wife, um, Missy Donaldson, um, don't exactly conform to a lifestyle the community approves of. And now Scott seems trapped in a feud with the couple over their dogs dropping their business on his lawn. 
Missy may be warm and friendly, but Deidre is as cold as ice. As the town prepares for its annual Thanksgiving 12K run, Scott begins to understand the prejudice the women face and tries to help. Unlikely alliances form, and the mystery of Scott's affliction brings out the best in people who have indulged the worst in themselves and others. I don't know. It sounded really, really good, so I'm excited to read that. The next book was a book that I put on my TBR because of the Currently Reading podcast. It is the 100 Year House one. Look at that cover. Oh my goodness. I just, it's giving me all the feels. It's by Rebecca Mackay. And the, it, it goes back and forth in timelines, which you guys know is a huge weakness for me. I love that so much. So meet the divorce. Z, a Marxist literary scholar who lives with her husband, an out-of-work academic in the carriage house at Laurel Field, her family's historic, historical estate. Gracie, her mother, who claims she can tell your lot in life by looking at your teeth, and Violet, Z's great-grandmother, who they say took her own life somewhere in the vast house and whose portrait still hangs in the dining room, terrifying the guests. When Z's husband begins to look into the history of the estate and the artist colony it once housed, he discovers much more than he bargained for. The first in a long line of secrets at the heart of this seemingly genteel, if very odd, family. In a daring feat of narrative artistry, uh, Mackay leads the readers back in time from the turn of the millennia to the 1950s, the 1920s, and the 1900s as we seek to uncover the truth about the divorce and Laurel Field, a generational saga told in reverse. The Hundred Year House is a brilliantly conceived, deliciously clever, and deeply rewarding novel about family fate and the incredible surprises life can offer. It it looks fantastic and it's not that it's not that big so it seems like a fun um a fun little little read so super excited about that one again i have a weakness for sci-fi so it is all all our wrongs today by ellen i think it's masti i think it's masti it looks fantastic it's 2016, and in Tom Barron's world, uh, technology has solved all of humanity's problems. There's no war, no poverty, and no underripe avocados. Those avocados, though. Unfortunately, Tom isn't happy. He's lost the girl of his dreams, and what do you do when you're heartbroken and have a time machine? Something stupid. Finding himself stranded in a terrible alternate reality, which we immediately recognize as our 2016, Tom is desperate to fix his mistake and go home, right up until the moment he discovers wonderfully unexpected version of his family, his career, and the woman who may just be the love of his life. Now Tom faces an impossible choice, go back to his perfect but loveless life, or stay in our messy reality with a soulmate by his side. His search for the answer takes him across continents and timelines in a quest to figure out, finally, who he really is and what his future, our future, is supposed to be. Ah, uh, I am so excited to read this. It sounds freaking awesome. So stoked. So stoked. Okay. So the next book is a mystery book that I'm super excited to dive deeper into. It had its moment, um, and of course I didn't pick it up whenever it was, you know, on the rage, but it is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This, it sounds super good. Um, it says, when you ask people what happened to Andy Bell, they tell you without hesitation, she was murdered by Salil Singh. No allegedly, no might have, no probably, no most likely. He did it, they say. Sal killed Andy, but I'm not so sure. Ha! Ah, so good. Everyone in Fairview knows the story. Pretty and popular high school senior Andy Bell was murdered by her boyfriend, Sal Singh, who then killed himself. It was all anyone could talk about, and five years later, Pip sees how the tragedy still haunts her town. But she can't shake the feeling that there was more to the story. She knew Sal when she was a child, and he was always kind to her. How could he possibly be a killer? Now a senior herself, Pip decides to re-examine the closed case for her final project. At first, just to cast doubt on the original investigation. But soon she discovers a trail of dark secrets that might actually prove Sal innocent. And the line between past and present begins to blur. Someone in Fairview doesn't want Pip digging around for answers. And now her own life, 
might be in danger. And I know that there's another book in this series as well, so if I love this, I will be most certainly picking it up. I'm so excited. There, so you can sort of see the stack. The next one I got is Una Out of Order by uh, Margarita Montemore, another sort of sci-fi kind of book. Um, it is New Year's Eve in 1982, and Una Lockhart has her whole life before her. At the stroke of midnight, she will turn 19, and the year ahead promises to be one of consequence. Should she go, or should she go to London to study economics, or remain at the home in Brooklyn to pursue her passion for music and be with her boyfriend? As the countdown to new to the new year begins, Una faints and awakens 32 years in the future in her 51-year-old body, greeted by a friendly stranger in a beautiful house she's told is her own. Una learns that with each passing year, she will leap to another age at random, and so begins Una out of order. Ugh, 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 that terrifies me. I would hate that. No! It's fine, guys, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so now I've got some library books that I have picked up that hopefully I can get to. If not, it's not a big deal. I can either renew them or I can check them out at another date. But I really wanted to read Stamped, the kids' version of Racism, Anti-Racism, and You by Jason Reynolds and Ibram uh, Kendi. It it looks fantastic, and I since I work around uh, kids all the time and things like that, I thought that it would be good to know what this is about so that I could recommend it to um, middle school librarians and things like that. It says race, the uh-oh, uh the R word. But actually, talking about race is one of the most important things to learn how to do. It looks amazing and fantastic. The next book I have is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. This shook bookstagram and all of that. It's during the time of the Dust Bowl um, in the uh, south, so Texas, all the way up into Oklahoma. It starts in 1921 and then starts its way all the way through the Great Depression in 1934. And it's following a, um, a woman named um, Elsa Wolcott. And it just, it looks it looks really, really good, and I'm told that that Kristen Hanna's writing is beautiful. Then, last but certainly not least, is a book that was like, just the title got me, so I had to get it. It's What the Hell Did I Just Read? by David Wong. I just, the cover is hilarious looking. It just, it looks fantastic. Um, it's the story they don't want you to read. Though to be fair, they are probably right about this one. To quote the Bible, learning the truth can be like loosening a necktie, only to realize it was the only thing keeping your head attached. No, don't put the book on the shelf. Don't put the book back on the shelf. It is now your duty to purchase it to prevent others from reading it. Yes, it works with ebooks too. I don't have time to explain. While investigating a fairly straightforward case of a shape-shifting interdimensional child predator, Dave, John, and Amy realize there might actually be something weird going on. Together, they investigate a diabol diabolically con convoluted maze of illusions, lies, and their own incompetence in an attempt to uncover the terrible truth that they, like you, would be better off not knowing. It looks great and funny, and I just... I had to pick it up. So those are the books that I hauled this past month. Have you read any of them? Is, is, are there any of them that I need to push to the top of my TBR or read next? Let me know down below. Did you haul any books this month? I would love to know, but that's the end of this chapter of Cortagonist. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, happy reading. Bye.